Yidashimase. Hello and welcome to Vitaris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Vitaris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this week, we have Feeble Light, a simple retro-styled roguelite. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Panda Indie Studios and publisher East Asia Soft, Feeble Light released in July of 2023 for the PC via Steam, the PlayStation 4 and 5, and the Nintendo Switch, which is the version we're looking at today. Feeble Light is a title I've really enjoyed my time with so far. It's basically a retro styled cute em up mixed with bullet hell and randomization elements at a great price point, so it's definitely a title I would recommend you check out, especially if you like the gameplay you see here. But before we go any further, just one thing to note, there are flashing uh, screens and lights throughout the course of the gameplay, so if you're photosensitive, this is a title that I would recommend you skip. Here we find ourselves at the main menu for Feeble Light. The game starts with one color palette the first time you fire it up, uh, but throughout the course of your gameplay we'll be able to unlock additional color palettes. I do have a couple favorites. Um, I'm partial to the color green, so palette 3 here I think is the one I'm going to show off the gameplay in, uh, but there are some really other like fun ones, like you've got some that are kind of more cotton candy-esque, some great like yellow themes, a really nice amber, um, but for our purposes today we're going with palette number 3. And the way you unlock pallets, we'll discuss here in a moment. Starting the gameplay, right off the bat, there is going to be an item that I'm going to avoid that could potentially uh, alter the gameplay, and I'll explain that one throughout the course of uh, our play. So that's that item I was talking about. We're going to skip that, as that would actually activate Chaos Mode. So, the stages are randomized. Before we actually start talking about the gameplay itself, that's an important element to note. Um, your stages will be basically drawn from five different stage palettes, and those particular stages will never be the same uh, every single time you play. You're going to be getting something slightly different. Uh, which in some cases can be great, but in this case, actually starting with uh, this stage, the fire stage is pretty uh, a rough start, to be honest. Alright, so getting down to the mechanics. Our main let's see, mechanic is this shot, which if you hold down for more than a second, turns into this uh, focus fire where we are moving significantly slower, and the, the way that uh, Feeble Light does it is something that I quite like. We have basically crosshairs being drawn in from the tops and the sides of the screen, indicating uh, where our ship is at. So we're already to the first stage boss, uh, Fiery Dragon Eddy. Uh, the names for the bosses are truly awesome. So, with some of the power-ups we've already picked up, the first boss is a relative cakewalk, but that might not always be the case. And that's where the randomization, the roguelite element, comes into play. So in addition to our shot, we also have a bomb. And the bomb itself is interesting because it doesn't actually deal damage, it's really just a survival mechanic because it will clear enemy bullets. So we can see that here against this um, sub-boss here, this um, dead li life form. And this is another part where I haven't quite figured out what's going on. After we finish the dead life form, we have an indicator there with five different um, spots to fill. And I haven't been able to complete a run where I've uh, encountered five dead life forms, but I would be interested to see what like unlocks when you actually manage that. And that's one of the other elements that I really appreciate about this game is all the unlocks. So initially you start by unlocking pallets. Oh, so real quick before that, the name of this boss, Big Upsetty. It's like <laughs> so good. Just this angry star. So the basic plot of this game is we're just this star that's looking to rid the cosmos of these angry celestials. And uh, Big Upsetty here is the perfect example for that. So we're already to the third level in the game, and once again, like I said, like everything will always be randomized. This one we've got the asteroid um, palette, and this one can be tricky as you've got like uh, all these specifically large asteroids that no matter how powerful our firepower is, we can't destroy them. 
and in this stage, like, it's also not as easy to go and use our survival bomb to get out of those situations, as it doesn't deal any damage. And the invulnerability you get from using your bomb is very, very slight, so you do need to be careful for your timing and situation. Just note that it will clear the screen of bullets, but won't necessarily deal damage, and uh, you'll still take contact damage with enemies or obstacles throughout the course of the gameplay. But the way that you uh, unlock, or rather, the way that you uh, aim additional bombs is by defeating enemies, they'll leave behind white stars. Uh, sometimes, depending on the background, they can be hard to see, um, this stage in particular, or your own shots will obscure them. But our boss here, um, Meteor Eddie, with the power-ups we've got, is, once again, fairly easy to take down, and as far as like um, power-ups are concerned, he even left us a damage plus, in further increasing the power of our shots. So as far as the power-ups are concerned, um, there are several that we can get. Um, if I were going from order of importance, I would say that probably rate of fire is number one, followed by number of bullets, so you can get like uh, rate O is what it refers to as, but it's basically your rate of fire up. You can also get um, bullets, which will increase the number of shots that we ultimately have. Oh yay, Rado, perfect. Uh, there's also damage, and then we have flares. So the flares are basically um, bombs, or not bombs, missiles, uh, but they fire infrequently enough that I don't feel they really uh, help out your offensive capabilities then it's also possible for us to earn some turrets as, a, as well as additional lives and then life or, um, life ups. So if we get extra life that increases our total or if we get like just a, um, a life plus that will just give us an a, a extra life from what we currently have. So we start off with the default three uh, but you're not dead until you're at zero and then you get hit one more time. So there is kind of a pretty forgiving mechanic that way but as we progress further and further into the game things do get uh, difficult. So as far as the various like stage palettes as I've uh, been referring to them uh, are concerned uh, the rock one is my least favorite, Rocky Monstre Stretty here, um, because you've got those like tight corridors to move through with all those um, turrets firing bullets at you, and some you can't even destroy. You would just have to use the bombs to clear the bullets. So we found ourselves in level 5. So this is the black hole palette, but one thing to note is that when you actually hit your uh, every fifth level, we're uh, gonna see a unique boss at the end of the stage. And that'll basically be the course of your run, is you'll play through the game, like every five stages you'll get a boss fight against um, the enemy, uh, ooh, hey, a mini boss. This is another one of the dead life forms. Uh, this one really sucks, but we're powerful enough that uh, we can take it out relatively quickly. And at the end of the stage, we're going to have uh, the special boss, uh, Entropy. Uh, at this point, I'm actually going to let him take me out so that we can talk about uh, one of the other mechanics in the game itself. So you can either try again, which will start you a fresh run, or we can just exit back to the menu. New palette unlocked. So initially, even if you die early in stage one, you'll get a new pallet, but the more pallets you've unlocked, the further you have to progress in a run to be able to unlock the additional pallets. So this is the pallet that we just unlocked. Uh, we'll actually play with that one uh, here for just a moment. And we'll start the game so I can show you one more like, element. So if we pick the star at the beginning of the stage, it activates Chaos Mode. And this is unlocked, I believe, after you... I got it on the first run that I defeated uh, Entropy. So what Chaos Mode uh, does is it takes the various stage elements, so the parts of the palette, and allows the game to go and draw them in whatever um, format we want. Or rather, it wants. So instead of like just picking the parts that would define um, the rock stage here with uh, Monstretti here, 
uh, we got elements of um, specifically the asteroid stage and the fire stage mixed together. So you're never going to go and know what you can expect, even if like a uh, stage of a certain background it's, it's going to be different. And that's something that can be pretty fun and exciting. And that's basically Feeble Light served up for your enjoyment. Definitely a title I recommend, especially given the low, low price point that it has. Uh, but it's not without its faults. So as far as minus flavors are concerned, one thing I do uh, take a little bit of issue with is both there's a lack of um, tutorialization at all, and then there's not any uh, ability to customize your controls. The controls are simple, but it still would have been nice to uh, be able to change what button I have, like bombs bound to, or to even have like a, uh, a single fire or a rapid fire shot rather than just the focus shot. Uh, then there's also um, the issue with the screen flashing that I went and mentioned. It would be nice if there was an option in the settings to turn that uh, down or to minimize that so the game would be more accessible. And lastly, with our last run, we actually started out with a really great like um, set of power-ups throughout the course of each stage. But considering you're only going to get like uh, two or three power-ups at the most throughout a stage, sometimes the randomization will really mess you up. And instead of getting like damage ups or rate of fire ups, you just get lives even when you're a full life. Uh, which obviously isn't going to help uh, your progress progression through uh, the stages themselves, and that's how the game actually scores you is how far you how many stages you've uh, gotten to, through. But as far as the plus values are concerned, so I really feel that like uh, especially given the price point that this game is at, it's a wonderful value. And uh, if you like these kind of uh, like rogue light um, shoot 'em ups with a bit of like a uh, challenge and like a really like nice like three-tone color um, design then uh, like this one is uh, really uh, one to check out there's also the challenge element since the game uh, like just keeps on looping through more and more stages uh, you'll get uh, to, as the game gets um, uh, progressively further into your gameplay, it gets faster and like uh, harder. You'll encounter more bullets, you'll encounter more enemies, and uh, it's just in general really ramps up the challenge. Also, in chaos mode here, you can see sometimes things might even turn a little bit unfair. Uh, I've had one situation where like a giant uh, asteroid was blocking um, the entrance into the rocky corridors there, uh, but for the most part it usually works and then like last then this is one of the things I've enjoyed the most about it uh, in addition to like uh, the fun color palettes a good soundtrack you have these awesome names like Big Upsetty here and it's just like really a fun package that's enjoyable to play so there you have it Feeble Light served up for your enjoyment alright that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday as always, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.